Welcome back to the bubble, ladies and gentlemen, and Kozax 3. I actually been getting some um, requests on challenges and things like that from uh, Oliver Cox. Awesome last name, by the way. And uh, I thought that I would honor one of those today by challenging myself to play against one impossible AI. And even uh, if I and play basically without bayonet units. So no musketeers from the 18th century, no grenadiers or anything like that. So even if I uh, so even if I manage to capture units from the other civilization, which I don't know what which uh, civilization that is. Hopefully it's uh, it's one quite. Uh, not too difficult, hopefully. But still, even if I capture peasants from that civilization, I will not be making any bayonet units out of that civilization. So still, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really interesting to say the least. So even if I manage to uh, capture any of those units, it's going to be uh, challenging to say the least. And also, Scotland cannot transition into the 18th uh, century. So of course there's not even any uh, availability for 18th century units or anything like that. So of course it's going to be really... Uh, really difficult, but still it's gonna be a lot of fun. I like challenging myself and also I guess That is not as interesting for you guys to only watch me doing like the same uh, The same strategy every single time. I want it to be a bit more fun to watch as well. I Need to get my food production going and I've never actually I haven't played that much against impossible AI earlier I've only played uh, against very hard as most of you uh, as those of you who have seen anything from this channel before can uh, testify against, I uh, can testify to. So I don't really know what to expect from Impossible, but it should be really difficult, seeing as it's impossible. But we'll see. We'll see how's it going, how it's gonna go. First of all, I will be selling my coal for lumber, because I need to get um, I need to get my second town center up or town hall up as soon as possible. The wood production is going on well and so is the peasant production and uh, they're working on stone obviously. The pikemen of the 17th century with Scotland are not armored so they will not be very well defended unfortunately. They are only armed with a long pike. And also, since I won't be able to have any bayonet units, I will be have I will need to make a bunch of covenanteer musketeers as well, ranged units. Because uh, even if I transition into 18th century with a captured or with um, yeah with a captured civilization, I will not be able to um, make any bayonet units. So I'll still be. Uh, very focused on musketeers when it comes to ranged damage because obviously the 18th century Because obviously the uh, 18th century units that are ranged are mostly like grenadiers and musketeers, right? So I'll need to make something else for myself. And also I'm not coming along quite as quickly as I would have wanted to with the town halls, unfortunately. But still, now I'm up to build my second one. I'm falling behind when it comes to points, unfortunately. Uh, something that's good with Scotland though is that I can build a stone wall, so that's good. And also the castles, I can make more mobile infantry units out of those so uh, they are like jogging around the field making them a lot faster than pikemen of course and also making them a lot more suitable for raids and um, harassment attacks 
and I can start building these uh, whenever, as soon as I can afford it, basically. And as soon as that town center is up, I will need to start recruiting peasants for this um, for this field right here. Because we need to get our food production going as fast as possible. And there we go. And also we will need to make a bunch of mines, obviously, to get our economy going. Uh, I might one sometime challenge myself to play without the market, but I did that once on multiplayer and it was not a good time. Everything went a lot slower compared to uh, when you can use the market, sell stone to get gold, etc. Everything goes a lot faster as compared to when um, there are no markets allowed. We're gonna get gold and iron and coal out of this, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. And I don't know what resource that was, but I'm gonna build a mine there, either way. Seeing as my um, food production is so low, that's why we're not getting any... Uh, not getting any... Um, units built units recruited rather so we're gonna wait for food and gold to increase the harvesting by 140 percent will which of course is gonna help us a lot oh it's gonna be a coal mine obviously no not obviously but awesome okay let's go can we please get some food up in this place I'm actually gonna suspend my pikemen recruitments until I get enough food to um, improve the grain crops treatment. So we're gonna wait a little bit until that happens and then hopefully the food is just gonna skyrocket because being low on food is not a good time at all. It basically um, inhibits you from creating any kind of unit and also the, um, a lot of the upgrades are reliant on food as well. But now we're soon up to 750, I hope. Wow, these guys are really not breaking their backs working right now. Of course, I first of all sent a bunch of pikemen out in order to... Um, in order to uh, do some reconnaissance to see from which... Ooh, hold, from which direction my opponent is most likely to turn up. Because I will, of course, want to be uh, as focused on possible on that specific site. Come on. I know you want to drop in the food. I mean, and also, if I uh, start this upgrade and bring the food uh, too far down, of course the production of units is going to be suspended, but also there is the risk of uh, starting a famine, which will cause, cause my population to uh, sporadically die all over the place, and that's not going to be fun, of course. Now we can restart our pikemen recruitment and also soon we will be up in a better gold production uh, situation and hopefully I will be able to make my second barracks as soon as possible because that will be very necessary for my unit production and also soon I will be able to make uh, my castle but I can only make like archers and these uh, fast swordsmen from that one so I don't think the strongest 
part of my infantry is gonna come from the castle, but rather harassment troops and also grenadiers are out of the question, so I will need the bowmen to uh, destroy buildings more easily. And of course Scotland is pretty weak late game because they don't have uh, grenadiers and musketeers, and also I will be playing with them. So I will need to finish this up like as fast as possible because the longer it drags on, the worse it's gonna be for me. And if you look at the points, I'm really starting to um, to come along. I don't know what happened to the computer, but I'm almost 20 points ahead. Maybe it wasn't the best of ideas to uh, send all of my peasants from food to start working on the academy. But, you know, I took some guys from stone to send them on uh, food production instead. I need my academy up and running as fast as possibly possible to uh, get the upgrades from it. And also I will need a lot of gold all day, every day. And a lot of times when I play on multiplayer, I've noticed, I don't uh, record all my games on multiplayer because I need to learn uh, a bit more to make it uh, more interesting for you guys to watch. But something I've noticed is that a lot of the games I've played have a lot more resources, like they start on the thousands, which is at least like 5,000 of each resource in the beginning, and also there are a lot more mines, which of course makes it a lot easier um, financially compared to when I play against computers. I usually have pretty few mines, like two of each, two of each, and also starting on a thousand resources so it's gonna be a bit slower start um, and a bit more challenging I think and soon we have our Academy built come on come on come on and then as soon as this built I'll send some of them to uh, wood and some of them to food there we go and I will actually start I uh, had the up the possibility to, uh, possibility to increase the stone excavation by 100% right off the bat and that's good of course because I want as much stone as possible to sell it for gold etc further down the line and also I want food soon and gold so that I can upgrade the wood cutting efficiency but at least now we have a lot better uh, stone production ow the recruitment of peasants is really slow Okay, so we have our opponent right up to the left. And I will be upgrading to get my um, food production on the move. I will also want... I will need uh, more wood to create my next... My next... Um, town hall. 6,300 of each. But, of course, it's really necessary to uh, have as many town halls as possible to get a good flow going on your economy. To keep those peasants coming and keep sending them to the resources like wood, food, stone, all day, every day. Because, uh, of course, you need to get the stone. You need to keep the stone coming and also the wood and, of course, the food. And also, I will not want for my um, non-military buildings to be captured. So I will be placing a bunch of my pikemen as guards throughout the building. So I need to keep my base kind of protected, of course, because I would not want for the computer to attack me with like Cossacks, siege Cossacks from the mercenaries to... Um, to start raiding and uh, capturing my mines and things like that. Because that would not be fun at all. So far not that many upgrades I can get from the academy and that's of course because I'm down on gold. And soon I have 5,500 food and then I will be getting the wood cutting efficiency so I will increase my efficiency with uh, lumber 
by 100% and that will of course help me a lot with my um, collection of wood obviously there we go eight idle peasants you will be working on stone and I will take some of these guys and post them out right there and then I will need to recruit some officers and drummers in order to uh, create formations out of my troops because of course making formations will um, creating formations will give plus I think plus three defense and plus two offense or something like that to every unit in the formation so of course it's it helps a lot if you have like 196 units in formation it's a lot more armor and uh, damage for each unit than if all of them would just be um, without formation okay and it looks like I might soon be able to get my next uh, town hall I just need a bit more lumber a bit more lumber please there we go and then I will send them immediately to this stone excavation point I need to get more gold as well somehow I knew there were some gold mines up here but I would not want for those mines to be captured also I can get this one without going to the 18th century but I need 12,000 gold for it I really hope that lowers later on in the game or otherwise I will not be able to get this for a long ass time okay so now we're creating peasants out of that one as well and they go straight to stone excavation and it looked like I will be able to create my first stable and I want to go up to 1250 gold so that I can upgrade the mines to the next level that will be really necessary at least well above all gold obviously let's see how far away am I from and also I need to get my artillery going because as I will not be having any strong units I will need to lean back on artillery and cavalry and everything like that and everything in between I was gonna say but you know what do I need next I need this one I need that one badly and I think since yeah, since I'm not going up to the 18th century, there are a lot of 18th century um, upgrades that I will be missing out on as well. All of these for armored units and things like that. But of course, I still don't have any armored units, except for my... Uh, if Scotland even have cuirassiers, cuirassiers, in that case, I will need it for them. What's the next? Okay, I need a lot of coal for that one. I need, I just need better activity in the mines right now and also to the stone excavation points. I will be building a tower because I need other defensive buildings as well and not only relying on units because I mean I don't have that big of an army to brag about right now. Okay, we have Lancers and we have Raiders. Light horsemen armed with a saber, fast buildings, a high movement speed. So these are most likely like Khazars or like Cossacks. 22.5 building time? That's a long building time. I think the Khazars are like 11.5 or something like that. But still, I will need to create these ones and of course I will be focusing heavily on uh, on harassments basically since uh, I will not be that strong in like front, full frontal engagements in uh, large-scale battles I will just need to rely on uh, speed ok 
Okay, can we maybe? No. Now we can upgrade our gold mine, get some more people into that one. And then I'll send people from food to stone, because we, we are good on food. However, we need stone to be trade, to trade for gold. And there we got that one. Great. Oh, those are fast. Great. Then I will put them somewhere out here. This would be a good place to start building a wall, actually. To uh, wall myself in, make myself a bit less easy to harass with uh, hussars. I'm still in the lead point-wise, but you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything in this game. Okay, and sell, and upgrade. Okay, we need 2,500 gold for the next barrack. And, of course, we'll need a lot of barracks, a lot of castles, because that will be where we produce our soldiers from. So I'll just need as many of those as possible, but mostly, first of all, I'm gonna need barracks because I don't think I can make formations out of the, uh, oh my god, here they come, it seems. What do we have over here? We have a bunch of armored pikemen, but they moved back, fortunately. I will make one formation of uh, pikemen right here, and hopefully that will help me a little bit. And also, I'm able to create my diplomatic center, but I will be making another stable first of all. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, I think we lost uh, the second pikeman that we threw out there. And there we have... I don't even know how good this frame gun is, to be honest. I just think it's... Hopefully it's gonna... Um, hopefully it's gonna deal uh, some damage and do some effective work. Against them. How long? It's still quite a long uh, time until I have my next stable built. And soon, look at that gold rising. Now I can create a castle or a 17th century barrack. Yeah, so I will be creating another 17th century barrack because then I will be able to create like more pikemen and create bigger formations and things like that. And that's gonna help me out, I hope. I really, really hope. And I will be putting out more guards. If I just press G and then select which building I want them to guard, then automatically they will send two guys uh, to guard that building. My nose is really itchy. I don't know why. So, pardon me for uh, rubbing my nose every every now and again. Okay, do we have a church built? I don't think so, but I want one. And then I will be uh, having my priests use um, my formations as guards. So then they will be uh, then they will be protecting the units. The formation. Okay, still in the lead point wise, and it's gonna be a lot more fun when we get. I'm actually gonna mark my market as uh, on the one key, so I can always go back to it and sell stone, for example. Because now we're getting somewhere with our mines, and I would really want that to keep going. Still also low on food. That's something that we need to work on. I mean, we have a lot of the food upgrades done. We only have like this one left. And maybe one of the issues is our one of the issues is that um, 
is that I keep taking peasants from the from the wheat fields, from the food fields, in order to uh, start building things. Okay, starting to get somewhere with our mines. That's good. And we're gonna create some more officers and drummers. I mean, this is not gonna hold anything against a very hard computer. I love the bagpipes for Scotland. Okay, I'm gonna select some uh, pikemen and I'm just gonna place them out on more of the buildings all over the place. Because I really don't want Cossacks to come from the come from the rear and just uh, and occupy my mines and things like that. So, like I said, I've been getting some requests on uh, doing some challenges from a YouTube account called um, or belonging to an Oliver Cox. So this one's for him. I really hope you enjoy it, man. I'll be doing uh, I'll be doing a lot of challenge type gameplay because uh, if I only play regular games, then the same strategy is gonna be a bit worn out. Okay, you do not want to mess with those guys. They were really kind though, not attacking me back because this is my little scout, my little scout rider. And I will want this upgrade as soon as possible as well. 8,200, I have a lot of, uh, I really have enough iron. I will be selling some gold for it, or some stone for gold and also for coal. So now we have uh, like 100 gold left to get that upgrade. And there we go. So now our cavalry will be produced a lot faster, which will mean that we will be able to harass them a lot more as well because we are only making raiders basically maybe we should be doing some lancers as well because i don't know how strong these guys are ineffective against infantry in combat formations or heavy cavalry that sounds promising light horsemen armed with a saber and effective for diversionary raids that's what we're gonna do in this game i'll actually i'll actually send these guys along to the western part and i think Actually, we have, yeah, all of our mines are upgraded to the second level. That's awesome. And now we'll be getting some more food as well. I really hope they don't attack me soon because everything seems to be going so well. Well, this poor guy is working alone on the artillery depot. I'll make sure he gets some help. And also, like I said, we'll be pumping out some priests, like 10 of them, and then they will be protecting the formations. Do we have another stone spot here somewhere, you think? It doesn't look like it. There we have another iron mine, though. But I'll be sending these guys on stone excavation as well. We really need to get this up, this upgrade, so that we will. Oh, it was actually not that expensive, so that we can start building a lot faster. Because then we will be sliding up the walls and things like that to be more protected. Let's see how far are we from the, how far away are we from this one? Two thousand four hundred. Oh, I did not mean to sell it for stone for coal. Oh well, soon we're there either way. Now we're there gold-wise, we just need to wait for the stone. And then I will create some uh, swordsmen from that position to only use for diversionary raids, uh, well, uh, as, uh, along with my cavalry. And then I will use the pikemen and the uh, musketeers, or the covenanteer, Coven covenanteer musketeers, uh, to protect to protect my position rather and then use the fast troops for attack and I will only be using some kind of like raiding or um, yeah some sort of raiding strategic or strategy okay 
Okay, no idle peasants, that's good. And however, we are almost on our way to be pop capped. So I'm building a couple of houses. I love these new factions. I mean, I haven't played Cossacks Ka 3 in a while, so when I bought it, um, but when I bought it, rather, I chose to get all. Wow. Now they died. That's too bad. When I bought it, I made sure to get a lot of the expansion packs. And one of them included Scotland. And uh, it, so it's a new faction. I'm really psyched to play it. I like a new factions with their unique buildings and their unique units and things like that. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay. There we have our cavalry right now, and we will be harassing a mine. I need to like choke out their economy as fast as possible. Let's see. Okay, I was not able to capture that one because the computer destroyed it. I don't know if with the impossible, I think it's a lot more difficult to just capture mines here and there. However, I might be able to capture these peasants. No, I was not, because they have pikemen right there. But we were able to um, to take those guys out. And now we will be attacking this mine. Hopefully uh, destroy that one. And if the computer plays in the same way as it does when it's on um, very hard, then their armies are going to turn back when they are attacked so that uh, they won't be attacking me, but rather will be turning back to protect their city. Wow, we have a lot of idle peasants. Where did all of they come from? All of them come from? All of they come from? Where did they come from? I don't know. Okay, now we don't have any idle peasants anymore, that's good. And most likely it's because this is built. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Sword Clansmen, those are the guys that's, that's jogging everywhere, so they're a bit faster. And then we also, of course, have the uh, Bow Clansmen, but I will be making the Sword Clansmen. And that one got destroyed as well, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, every second that those mines are destroyed, that's time that they don't get any money. And that's good. That's good for me. 12,500, 6,000 to get the next... The next castle. And of course I want the next castle. So I'm gonna trade for it, and then build it, and soon I will go for uh, another stable. Where... Are all of my resources going? It doesn't feel like the, the uh, accumulation of resources is going as fast as I would have wanted to. But look at that. Clansmen, they're jogging. So I'll use both them and my cavalry to, um, to raid and to, um, to raid and to harass. However, I will actually make some lancers as well because I think I will need the lancers to, uh, to protect as well and like all my barracks will only be making um, will only be making supportive units like defensive units okay our food production is going poorly however we are able to make yet another town hall so of course we will and we will be protecting it to the best of our abilities. So there we go, more clansmen. Clan swordsmen, sword clansmen. Yeah. Feels like I never get that one right. Sword clansmen or clan swordsmen? Clan swordsmen. Okay, we have more raiders, so we're gonna send them to raid because that's what they do, that's their purpose. And we need to upgrade our Sword Clansmen a bit more as well, and please will I soon be able to make a bit better artillery. Because I guess the frame guns 
yeah, I can make multi-barrel cannons with, uh, with Scotland. So I guess the frame gun is some kind of poor man's multi-barrel cannons. I don't even know how effective it might be. So now I have my priest chosen, I press G, and then I press the formation. Every time I press it, they're gonna send two priests. So I'm spreading them out all over the formation right now, so they'll be standing here. And making sure that my guys are in tip-top shape. When... Um we're not having any 18th century buildings or upgrades to look forward to. Scotland actually feels a bit a bit slow to play. Okay, I will not be building the wall yet. I will rather be... Um, I will be waiting to purchase this upgrade so that I see the entire map and it doesn't feel like the uh, cost is going down does it so it's like 12,750 gold in order to see the whole map so I will be selling a bunch of stone until I get there basically and what was the cost for this upgrade oh now I can do this 12,520 coal all right Not there yet, not there yet. Let's see if I sell like a thousand, two thousand of those. Please, there we go. No, 12,750 gold, yeah. This one was the one that I was going for. So now we'll be going for stone to gold and we'll be selling a lot of it. And upgrade units everywhere we can. Look at that. And kaboosh. Now the stone is gonna come pouring in and that's awesome. Because we're gonna be selling a lot of it. I will try to make sure that each of... Oh my god, that's the Raiders that each of the episodes are like half an hour long, something like that, so it doesn't get too, uh, too stiff for you to sit through like a two hour, uh, a two hour game. You remember the, um, the uh, war, of the, war of the Western Europe, I think, took like almost three, three hours to play through that game. That was me playing as Spain against two very hard computers, one in Portugal, one in France, and damn, that took a long time took a long time and now you can see that the stone is really getting somewhere that's awesome and we need to be upgrading more of our troops and also as soon as we have 9400 wood we will be building another stable there we go and of course we'll be making both Raiders and Lancers out of that one as well. One down. They keep rebuilding the mines. And I will keep destroying them because that's what I do. Unfortunately we weren't able to capture any of the peasants and the mine was blown up as well. That's too bad. But we'll just keep riding around in circles. I can't believe I'm not attacked yet, though. Most likely it's because of my epic raiding capabilities. Must be because of that. Can't be that the impossible uh, computer AI is bugged, right? I don't know if it is, actually. It might be. But time will tell, I guess. One poor rider, raider left. And they are coming with formations. A lot of officers, that's a lot of officers for that small of formation. Well, well. 
at least the sword clansmen yes yeah, sword clansmen are coming along we have like 60 of them right now not that not that many unfortunately but we will be needing more so I will just keep selling my stone for gold until eventually you'll be able to get this upgrade and then that will open up a whole new realm of possibilities for me when I see the whole map I'll be able to like navigate around and coordinate my defense efficiently and things like that okay we can upgrade a mine to level 3 of course we will do that and we go with the gold mine first of all 12 idle peasants you can go on food and you will go to the gold mine okay so far it's going okay really Oh, I don't have enough pikemen to create a bigger formation. Let's see. Now I will actually start using my sword clansmen. So I will be sending them first to the far west, and then I will move them straight up into the mines of uh, the AI. They are really coming along point-wise, though. Most likely, they are soon in the 18th century, and then. It's not going to be a fun time for me at all. Remember, no bayonets. So that means no grenadiers, no 18th century musketeers. And even, not even any grenadiers from this, uh, from this diplomatic center. So, I mean, if I'm able to make... Oh, I haven't, uh, been a, I haven't uh, remembered to check which civilization the computer uses. But it seems to be a European one at least so it's not like Algeria or Turkey or anything like that which of course would make it a bit easier for me seeing as they don't uh, get to the 18th century either okay now we have some musketeers as well it seems like the uh, computer is coming from either the west or the northern side they always uh, come down a bit and then they go right back but look at that, 31 minutes. I'm actually gonna take uh, a little break from this one, but so far in this episode, um, we are playing in Scotland and I'm challenging myself against an impossible AI to not use any bayonet units. So I uh, used uh, Scotland in this, sec in this uh, section. They have uh, fast raiding infantry and cavalry as well, so that will be very handy. However, I will need to come up with some sort of strategy in order to create a strong defense because if I'm not able to destroy the computer fast enough, they will be coming with 18th century musketeers and grenadiers and that's gonna shred a hole into any unit I can make at Scotland. And even if I capture units out of there, Civilization, so I can start making uh, that civilization. I won't be making any bayonet units there as well, so I will be making like 18th century pikemen, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. Still, hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next one.